you know what's interesting is that I actually put out a questionnaire on Facebook and asked the guys to submit some questions. And I got an interesting one from a guy. He was like, you know, why is it that you give your number to people and they don't call back? And how could you actually manage that situation better? I think that a lot of people take numbers. It's almost like a psychological, egotistical thing. You start thinking about, oh, this guy is not the guy that I want. He doesn't look perfect. And so you start interacting with a story and not actually with the person who is behind that story. So there's a through line that keeps coming up, which is about being realistic with yourself, what you think that you look like, where you think you are emotionally, and what you think you deserve. Men fall in love through their eyes. Women fall in love through their ears. Chemistry for men, the first thing, they have to physically be attracted to a woman in order to have chemistry, which goes back to loving yourself, being confident. How about when you go out on a date with somebody and you think you had the greatest time in the world and then he never calls? I might say, well, how, how was it? How did it go? You know, there was absolutely no chemistry. I felt like I was talking with my sister. I thought we were, I thought it was a brother-sister thing or a good friend thing that we were just catching up. And I talked to her and she thinks she had the greatest time in the world and she was sure she was going out with him again. So chemistry is an intangible that nobody can account for. It can be a body language, it can be a smile, it can be a sense of smell. For men, unfortunately, it's a visual. So I think um, a lot of times we don't interact with what's actually happening in the present moment. So we have this idea, um, you take a number and you might have been attracted to this man at first and then you leave and he's not in front of you anymore and so then all of a sudden all of these stories that you have going on in your mind are what's happening. So this woman who had this date and oh it was amazing and it's because there's maybe a spark of something and then she started telling herself all of these stories about the way it was going to be and all of the expectations that we're going to have and, and the guy is like, I didn't see any of that and, and that pushes him away. Many, many years ago, it was in my first book and a man answered it when I surveyed that. It's called For the Moment. I said, can you explain that? I'm with a girl and I think I'm interested in her and I ask for her number. For the moment or at the moment, I was interested. I went home. I thought about it. Maybe if it was 20 years ago, I would have called her. But the more I thought about it, it's not what I want right now in my life. I want to find somebody, settle down, and get married. How do you not get bored with dating? Because yeah. you're bored with it. Oh, yeah. A lot of women, in married and single, we have patterns. We have our patterns of mm -hmm. dealing with people. We have the patterns we establish in our relationships. We have the patterns of how we choose people, how we choose friends, and whatever, whatever. If you're bored with dating, it means that you're probably choosing people who are not exciting you. When people are bored in dating, or when people have just sort of like, you know what, I'm over this, I need a breather, it could be because either you're on dating datorama or the dating treadmill, or most important, Lydia, you're just dating the wrong men. You're probably meeting them at the wrong places and you're dating the wrong men. Because if you're with the right person, like I'm with my husband 31 and a half years, there is not a chance in China, there was, there was no way on earth that this man will ever be bored.